thank you for being here. Uh, it's um, uh, just a great day for the Broncos. Uh, couldn't be more excited to have uh, the opportunity to introduce our new team president, uh, Damani Leach. Damani, welcome to Broncos country. Uh, also here today that I'd like to introduce is Damani's family, Dr. Tamara Leach and Brianna and Simone. It's great to have you all here. When we began this comprehensive search, our goal was to identify a forward-thinking and innovative leader for the Broncos. We wanted to find someone who could steer our business operations with innovation and integrity, working collaboratively across the organization. Over the course of many conversations with myself and our partners, Damani's leadership, strategic vision, and collaborative spirit stood out. George Payton's input and support was also an important part of the process. Damani is highly thought of and respected across the NFL and in sports at large. His 25 years of experience at both the NCAA and growing the game with the NFL give him a great base of experience to draw from. And as a former college player himself, he understands football and he appreciates the value of teamwork. The Broncos have an incredible legacy, and Damani is the perfect person to help lead this franchise into the future. With that, it's my pleasure to introduce the new team president of the Denver Broncos, Damani Leach. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate that introduction. Um, it is a tremendous honor and privilege to be a part of the Denver Broncos and Broncos country. I want to thank first um, Greg as well as the entire Walton Penner ownership group, obviously Greg, but uh, Carrie and Rob, Melody and Condoleezza, all of whom I had a chance to speak with throughout this process and, and Lewis, and it, it really is a, a deeply humbling opportunity to be a part of this organization um, and the next chapter of this great organization. Uh, thanks to General Manager George Payton, who I had a chance to connect with at, at multiple times um, during, during this process. We had the pleasure of talking and sharing um, you know, our unique bonds of playing college football and, and starting in an industry really as basically interns and working our way up. Um, and, and you can believe we have a shared vision on the importance of football to this organization um, with the number one goal of being winning. I'm excited to support George and Coach Hackett, who I've, I've met several times. We met earlier today and hugged three times in the span of five minutes. Um, just two brilliant football, football minds um, and just really excited to, to work with them in this process. Um, you know, as, as Carrie Walton Penner said um, earlier, I think during her introduction, really we want to make this the best organization to play for, to cheer for, uh, and to work for. And, and I'm committed to that and being a part of an organization that is also committed to that. Um, I'd be remiss if I didn't also thank my, my family, my wife, Tamara, daughters, Brianna and Simone. I'll try not to cry. Um, but thank them for their support and, and really sacrifice in, in making this a reality. So um, they're also, we've all moved out here and, and excited to be a part of Broncos country and, and be a part of the Denver community. Um, this club, as you all know, has a tremendous reputation, one that is really second to none. Uh, there's a deep tradition of winning, uh, a history of community impact, and a loyal and passionate fan base in, in, in really what is a thriving global city that is Denver, that we're, we're excited to be a part of. Uh, I have great success for this franchise and its history. Um, not only uh, great players and coaches, Hall of Famers, um, you know, not to mention uh, the late Pat Bolin, who from a league's perspective is someone who is revered across the league, and Joe Ellis as well. Um, I stand here truly on the shoulders of giants, and, and, I, and I really understand that, and I don't take that for granted as well. Um, while I was um, just starting at the league office in 2015, I had my first experience at the 2015 uh, AFC Championship game, and coming out to this stadium and this community and feeling the fans, it was, it was incredibly palpable 
Um, it was really unique, not, not like many clubs um, around this country, and it's something that has stayed with me, that experience, and really excited to be, to be a part of that now. Uh, Broncos country is just, it's really special. Um, I'm gonna come to work every day, laser focused on supporting football, connecting, engaging with our fans, uh, with an eye on the future. So that football fans and future is what you're gonna see from me and what I'm gonna embed in our staff and in this culture um, to really turn, exactly, turn the page uh, of this organization into the next chapter of this club. And I can't wait to get to work. We have a tremendous staff here at UC Health Training Center uh, in Power Field at Mile High. Uh, I'm gonna approach it with a listen and learn approach for them, really great and talented people, uh, but excited to get to work with Broncos country. Let's ride. Hey, Ryan O'Halloran, Denver Post. One for each of you guys. Uh, Damani, first, what about your league side experience will benefit you the most here and have a follow up with Greg? Yeah, sure. Um, good question. Uh, at the league office, you have the benefit of really seeing across all 32 clubs and understanding what makes things really successful in this league. I plan to take a lot of those learnings, whether it's data, um, practices, experiences, and really try to connect that with what we do here that's already successful and look for opportunities to make it even better. Greg, his NFL experience, how critical was that into hiring him and how important was that? Uh, it was definitely an important part of the process. Uh, his understanding of how the league works and the relationships that he's built across the league, working with all 32 organizations, is going to be invaluable to us. And uh, he's been involved in growing a part of, of the NFL and understanding how to grow a business is, is important. Uh, and then just the connections he has in sports and, and business uh, will be uh, particularly important. Yes, Damani, uh, in the first press release said you'd be in charge of business and stadium management. How does that uh, marry with football, with George Payton? And you know what kind of involvement, if any, will he have with the football operations? Yeah, well, uh, good question. I think one of the things, and, and you've heard me say it and others say it, that our, our currency around here is winning. We are a football club. We're a football organization. So we're all, all the oars are in the water in that direction of being a successful football club on the field. Now, my responsibility is to work with George, and I'll do that. We have a great relationship already um, to support football and business. These two things can't be successful without each other. Um, so we'll have great communication, great candid, open communication. But my focus is outside the lines. I won't be picking players or calling plays. I'm focused on the fans and the community, growing our fan base tremendously of Broncos country, um, and doing what we can to make our players successful on the field and off the field. Uh, Brandon Cristal with KOA Radio. My question is for both of you. I want to start with Greg. The Broncos have gone out of their way, I think, or put an emphasis on diversity top to bottom in the organization in recent years. So how important was that to be continued by you and your ownership group? And, and was Damani kind of at the top of the list for that reason as, as much as any? And then Damani, how much did that mean to you to see what this organization has done with the diversity in the ownership group and, and throughout the, the building? Yeah, we've, uh, we've said from the start, diversity is, is really important to us. And uh, that's, that's diversity of experiences, perspective, background, um, ethnicity, all of that is, is, uh, is, we think, makes us better. And so when we set out to identify a pool of candidates here, uh, that was certainly an important part of it. And uh, Damani rose to the top uh, because he's the right person for this role, and um, he's got the right set of experiences and background, and, and his, his uh, vision and, and values matched really well with ours. Yeah, and I think for me, it was important to see it but also hear it with the ownership group. Uh, and then as I got closer to the organization, you see it across the football staff, uh, embracing diversity and doing it uh, as a strategic advantage. I really feel like DEI is, is a strategic advantage. I think the clubs and organizations that lean into it are gonna be more successful. Um, so in, certainly personally, it was great to hear and feel it and see it, but I'll, I'll also take that with me in leading this organization. Hi, Damani, uh, Eric Delalit from DenverBroncos.com. Welcome to Denver. Uh, a couple of questions for you. First, you've been to a couple of preseason games and had a chance to meet some staff members. What have just been your initial impressions? 
meeting the staff was great. Both, both days I had a chance to meet staff of the preseason games. It's game day. People are running around, doing their jobs, working hard, but everybody stopped, shook my hand, and you could feel from them the excitement as this, this organization begins to, to, to turn over a new leaf, and um, I think a lot of people want to be a part of that journey, and I'm excited to be on it with them. And then secondly, you, you mentioned your experience at the league office and with the NCAA. What appealed to you about joining a team and kind of experiencing it from a different side? Winning. Winning. Uh, when you're at a league office, you don't often win um, and you don't often lose. And, and to be a part of an organization that's committed to winning on and off the field was, was incredibly attractive. But then also having an emotional investment in that success and the outcomes was really attractive. Nick Kosmider with The Athletic. Damani, at Princeton you studied public policy and international affairs. The last portion of your experience with the league office was with NFL International. And I'm curious what you see as opportunity uh, for a franchise uh, at, at, in kind of this modern time to expand the game, expand the team's brand uh, internationally, and how big of a part of your, your role will that be? The, the NFL certainly is the preeminent sports and entertainment property here in the United States uh, with designs on being the number one sports and entertainment property around the world. The NFL is what it is because of its collection of clubs and players. And as we, when I was at the league office, were trying to grow internationally, what we realized is that people are fans of players and they're fans of teams. And so giving clubs an opportunity to get international, um, to grow fans, develop relationships, but then also leverage that for commercial purposes was the right strategy. It's something I was excited to see launch and now excited to take on uh, in a more direct role with the Broncos. Troy Rink from Denver 7. Damani, this is for you and for uh, Mr. Perrin. What does winning look like on the business side? see it on the scoreboard and the standings, it's easy. What does it look like? How do you articulate on the business side for both of you? Sure, I, I can start. Uh, I think it's a, a few different dimensions. One is uh, just growing revenues of the business, uh, but also it's fan engagement, community impact, uh, you know, building the right culture and, and, and uh, values within the organization. All of that is, is winning on the business side. And I think, I think going a layer deeper will be important for us as an organization to really define that. I'm, I'm big on data, I'm big on metrics and accountability, and you, you actually do define winning, right? By how many people are coming to the stadiums, how many people are engaging with our social and digital properties, how many people are buying our, our licensed products, how many people are we connecting with in the community, Who's on, how many people are on the season ticket holder waiting list? There's a lot of different ways to measure success. I think the key for us is to be aligned on what those definitions are and then what our goals are and track those over time. Andrew Mason, DenverFan.com and 104.3 The Fan. One for each of you. First, Damani, uh, Greg mentioned the working collaboratively as an organization. Sometimes football organizations, there can be a gulf between football and non-football. So what are the things maybe that you can do to kind of help everyone kind of get on the same page within an organization like this one? Yeah, I, I, think, I think one thing that I, I bring to the table that I think will be an asset is someone who at least played college football at a fairly high level, um, but, but I have empathy uh, for what happens in a football organization, what the goals are, what the challenges are, and I can communicate that to the organization. I think what's most important is that we have a shared goal. So when we say it's about winning on and off the field, being committed to that. And then I think ultimately on a day-to-day -day basis, it's about communication, really being candid and open with the communication, having moments where we meet on a regular basis and talk about those issues. And Greg, for you, it's been nearly three weeks since assuming the reins here. What have you learned about this sport, this industry that maybe you didn't know when you first arrived here earlier this month? Uh, it's been a terrific three weeks. It's been been busy. Uh, obviously, we've had a couple games, uh, attending practices, uh, you know, just getting a chance to see how the football operation works. And George and Nathaniel, and uh, it's it's intense. And and you know, the preseason it, it seems to drag on for a little while. But um, uh, I think Nathaniel's got our team ready and even for the guys who haven't played much you know he had everybody uh moving in the same direction and and with a goal and uh i think we're going to be uh in a in a great position when we get to seattle in a couple weeks and uh, uh just can't wait to get there and get started hi damani sean keeler of the denver post with your background with events both domestically and internationally obviously 
I guess I'm kind of curious. So Greg already knows the elephant in the room is, is in power field to some degree. That's going to be in your wheelhouse. I'm wondering what your thoughts on, on, on the stadium since you've had that experience for a game day. And in developing that next generation of fans, what are they going to see in that experience and whether it's, it's current location or not? Well, first of all, in power field at Mile High Stadium is a, is a world-class facility. Um, it, it not only hosts, you know, amazing NFL games, but also concerts and other events and, you know, is a, a core part of this community. Um, there are a number of things that I'll be looking at as I, as I take over in this organization. Obviously, the this, this stadium is one of them. On day one, I don't have any proclamations to make, but it's certainly something I'll be evaluating. Hi, Darren McKee from 104.3 The Fan um, for Damani and then for uh, Mr. Penner as well. First, what successful traits have you noticed, Mr. Leach, about successful organizations that you've seen at the league office, meaning what successful habits do they have? And the second question I have to ask to both of you guys, are you thinking about uniforms? Because that is by far the biggest question I get from uh, the fans out there. So good, good question about the, the successful organizations. I think if, if there's a theme across our 32, and you hear this across sports, not just football, um, is there is a tendency for a lot of clubs to do things the same way. And the, the organizations that have been really successful from a business standpoint have had a growth mindset and an innovation mindset, have zigged when others have zagged. Um, doesn't always work, but definitely take chances to try to connect with fans in new and unique ways. And that's no more important now than it's ever been uh, with all the different opportunities fans have for entertainment, not just sports entertainment. Um, so I definitely have that approach and that mindset to it. Um, I think uniforms is a good example of that, where I think you've got to try and balance history and tradition and um, you know, three Super Bowls wearing this uniform, but also understanding that tastes evolve, your customer evolves, um, and, and connecting with fans and, and representing your brand in the best way uh, is important to do. Again, no proclamations on day one, um, but is also one of those things certainly that I'll be looking at. Uh, the main thing I've learned in a few weeks is there are a lot of opinions about the, the uniforms, and uh, I, have, I have not formed any conclusions yet. <laughs> Damani, welcome to Denver. Zach Stevens with DNVR. This is a question for both of you. You both have talked about how winning is the number one priority. What does that look like this year, and, and what are your goals and expectations for the team on the field this year? You want to take that first? Sure. Go I, for it. Sure. Uh, so I don't think it's a specific record. Obviously, a, a, a key goal would be we want to make the playoffs. We'd love to win a championship. That's that's oh, I think always has to be the goal when you come into a season. Uh, and so that's, that's our goal, that's our focus. Yeah, yeah, I mean, again, my focus is off the field supporting football, um, providing them with the tools and resources to be successful, whether that's financial or our people, um, supporting and amplifying what they're doing on the field, in the community, helping our players grow their brands is, is my focus. That's what success looks like uh, for me. Uh, Jeff Legwald from ESPN. Uh, Damani, first for you. Uh, Sort of 12 weeks ago, were you thinking, I sure want to be a team president someday? And in that light, what did you want to show Greg in the initial interview? What did you hope he saw in you for the job? And then, Greg, what did you want to hear or see from anyone who got the, that you would give the job to? So as this process started, what I would say is I was at the league office for just under eight years and was comfortably challenged in my role, some days uncomfortably challenged, but very challenged in my role, was not looking for any opportunity, but as I saw the ownership uh, transition take place, I definitely, um, it definitely perked my, piqued my interest. Um, and then as the process evolved, I think as I got to talk to Greg and to Rob and Carrie and Melody and Condoleezza, my, my interest and excitement just continued to grow. What I wanted to do was make sure that was clear to them as somebody who has more of a league or headquarters experience and profile, wanted to make it clear to them, not only that I was interested in it, but then I could be an asset given that 30,000 foot view of I've had of, of sports organizations, both professional and college. We were, we were mainly looking for characteristics that were the right fit. So again, I mentioned some in the, in the beginning, which is someone who was forward-looking, collaborative. Uh, the values uh, had to align with ours as an ownership group. Uh, and then it was looking at the, the experiences that uh, uh, all of the, you know, the candidates uh, had a very you know, diverse experiences, but Damani really rose to the top with his uh, experience at the NFL working with the 32 different organizations and uh, 
and growing the business on, the, on an international basis. Uh, we had one uh, interview where he uh, actually prepared a, a document and, and laid out how he would think about his uh, laying out his objectives uh, for himself and the organization, uh, the business operations, and that was particularly impressive. Hey, Damani, it's Arnie Stapleton from Associated hey. Press. Um, talking about you know standing on the shoulders of giants, I'm, I'm wondering. I know that Joe Ellis had a lot of a different role than, than you're stepping into in, in the last few years. You know, he, he had a lot of hats that he wore, but what do you admire um, when you look, and I, I'm sure you've, you've watched him from afar, what do you admire about what he did? What can you kind of take from your predecessor? Yeah, um, good question. A, a few things. One, Joe had a tremendous reputation across the league. I think given the length of his tenure and the success that the club has had, particularly from a fan standpoint, um, was, was, was particularly Im impressive. I think here more recently, though, Joe has been incredibly gracious with his time and with me. We actually just emailed over the weekend. Um, and, and while he isn't going to be here every day, he's committed to being a resource and being available to me um, for any questions or thoughts that I have, and I really appreciated that. Damani Parker, Gab Parker Gabriel from uh, USA Today. I, I think now there are four African-American team presidents in the NFL. How do you sort of take measure of the significance of that, your place in it, and then also sort of the path to creating more opportunities for, for minority candidates? I'm, I'm number four. I'm not number one, which is, I think, is, is a statement in and of itself, and that I'm not the first. And in, in what you're seeing is the league beginning to evolve in areas of appreciating diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, as I talked about being, standing on the shoulders of giants, I think that's within this organization. But when you look at black executives across sports, also I stand on the shoulders of giants, those not just in football, but across other leagues, professional and collegiate, many of whom have been mentors to me um, and have reached out to me as this announcement has taken shape um, to really congratulate me. And I appreciate that and therefore understand the duty I have to really sort of pay that forward to the next generation. Last one, Brandon Cristal. Brandon Cristal, KOA. Uh, Damani, there's a lot of newness here New ownership, you talked about keeping an eye on, on that. A new quarterback that's had a pretty good first decade in his career, a new head coach, second year GM. How much did the newness and, and the excitement around the organization factor into you wanting to take the job? Pretty significantly. That was, that was one of the things I was most excited about, was joining a group, uh, a new group across ownership, football, business, you know, coaches, general managers, quarterback, a lot of that was really exciting because when you want to grow and innovate, having people who are coming to it with fresh eyes and or just different experiences across business and life was really, really attractive. Okay, thank you very much. We'll do a couple Thank you. Follow -up.